Hello Year 12s and welcome to this video on technology strategies. This is part of a series of four videos on the use of different kinds of strategies to optimize a business's operations. There are four things that you need to do while you're watching this video. The first thing is to take the very best Cornell notes that you can. The second thing is to use the pause and rewind functions. Use the pause function if you need to stop this video to take notes. Use the rewind function if you want to go over any information contained in this video. The third thing that you need to do is to have your vocabulary sheets open in front of you so that you can write in your vocabulary sheets the definitions of any key terms or of any other words that you may be unfamiliar with. And the fourth thing that you need to do is to have your summary books open in front of you. As we go through this video, I will give you some guidance as to what you should include in your summary books. Once you've finished watching this video, make sure that you read the section of the textbook referred to on this slide. And if you find any additional information from that reading that you think is useful, then supplement your Cornell notes with that additional information. You'll recall that operations management is the management of resources and functions within a business, that is the management of the operations system, to transform inputs into goods and services, that is outputs, in a way that minimizes the costs of production and maximizes the quality of those outputs. Accordingly, the aim of operations management is to transform inputs into goods and services, or outputs, in a way that minimizes the costs of production and maximizes the quality of those outputs. Put another way, the aim of operations management is to make the best use of the operation system of a business, that is, to optimize the operations of the business. By minimizing the costs of production and maximizing the quality of outputs, Good operations management improves the efficiency and the effectiveness of operations and therefore maximizes the business's competitiveness. I've explained these concepts in a previous video. You should also recall that there are four types of operations management strategies that can be used to improve the efficiency and the effectiveness of the operations of a business and therefore maximize the competitiveness of the business. These four types of strategies are technology strategies, materials management strategies, quality management strategies and waste minimization strategies. In this video we will be looking at technology strategies. On this slide I've set out the two learning intentions for this video. Write these learning intentions down in your Cornell notes. The first learning intention requires you to be able to describe and evaluate strategies to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of operations related to technological developments. The four strategies that we'll be looking at for this purpose are automated production lines, computer-aided design, computer-aided manufacturing, and website development. The second learning intention requires you to be able to propose and justify technology strategies as ways of improving the efficiency and effectiveness of operations. By watching and taking notes on this video, you will be given the information that you need to achieve these learning intentions. We'll also be doing a number of learning activities in class that will require you to apply this information in a way that will help you to achieve these learning intentions. The first technology strategy that we're looking at is automated production lines. An automated production line consists of computer-controlled machinery and equipment that is arranged in a series of workstations that are linked by an automated transfer system like a conveyor belt, where each workstation performs a specific operation so as to add components as the good proceeds through each step. An automated production line often incorporates robotics. Robotics refers to a highly specialized form of technology that is capable of complex tasks and that is often used in an automated production line. Look down the left hand side of your vocabulary sheets Find the terms automated production line and robotics and write these definitions in there. 
Automated production lines and robotics are often used in the mass production of goods. For example, in the video that we watched on the Toyota factory, we saw how automated production lines assembled all of the components that were necessary to produce a Toyota car, including by stamping the panels, assembling the chassis, painting the car body, and fixing doors, bonnets, windscreens, and tires. So far, as required by our first learning intention, we have described two technology strategies, that is automated production lines and robotics, that can be used to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of operations. However, our first learning intention also requires you to be able to evaluate these strategies, which means that you need to be able to explain and weigh up both their advantages and their disadvantages. Remember that an evaluation is more than a description. In an evaluation, it's not sufficient to simply describe the advantages of automated production lines and robotics in one paragraph, and then to describe the disadvantages of automated production lines and robotics in another paragraph. Instead, in an evaluation, you must weigh up each advantage against its related disadvantages using words of difference such as however, on the other hand, in contrast, whereas, and while. This requires you to compare apples with apples. In this table, I've identified the advantages and related disadvantages in the same colour. There are some advantages that don't have related disadvantages. These are the advantages in purple. We can still include these advantages in an evaluation, but we'll do this in a separate paragraph at the end. Please include this table in your summary books, together with notes from the discussion which follows, where this helps you to better understand the table. Now carefully listen to how I would use this table to evaluate automated production lines and robotics as technology strategies. Automated production lines and robotics make more efficient use of time because they can produce outputs at a higher speed and, unlike humans, can work without breaks. On the other hand, production can be brought to a halt if the software that controls them is hacked or is infected by a computer virus or if there is a mechanical failure. Another advantage of automated production lines and robotics is that they can replace labour, which means that the business will save on labour costs such as wages. However, it can be very costly to buy and install automated production lines and robotics. For a business to save costs overall as a result of using automated production lines and robotics, the upfront capital costs of purchasing and installing this technology must be less than the savings in labour costs. It can also be very costly to maintain automated production lines and robotics because they are complex and highly technical, and so they must be serviced by properly qualified experts. A final disadvantage of automated production lines and robotics is that while they save labour costs, this saving can often mean that some of the existing employees in a business who used to perform the work manually will be made redundant. However, it may be possible to avoid at least some of these redundancies if existing employees can be retrained and equipped with the skills needed to monitor and service the automated production lines and robotics. In addition, automated production lines and robotics have the advantages of being able to perform dangerous tasks which might injure workers, as well as being able to perform boring or repetitive tasks which workers don't want to do. Finally, because automated production lines and robotics generally operate with higher precision and accuracy than humans, they can produce higher quality goods with less wastage of inputs. Our second learning intention requires you to be able to propose and justify technology strategies as ways of improving the efficiency and effectiveness of operations. To do this, you must be able to specifically relate the use of automated production lines and robotics separately to efficiency and effectiveness. 
That is the purpose of this table. Please include this table in your summary books, together with notes from the discussion which follows, where these help you to better understand this table. All I've done in this table is to take the relevant advantages of automated production lines and robotics from the previous slide, still colour-coded, and relate them to both efficiency and effectiveness. By keeping the coloured wording, I'm hoping that you can see that you only need to learn the information once to be able to answer both a question that requires you to evaluate the advantages and disadvantages of automated production lines and robotics, and a question that requires you to justify automated production lines and robotics as ways of improving the efficiency and effectiveness of operations. Well, how do automated production lines and robotics improve efficiency? Remember that when we are talking about the efficiency of an operations management strategy, we are focusing on how that strategy increases the value of output and reduces the cost of inputs. The first way in which automated production lines and robotics increase efficiency is by reducing the cost of labour. Labour is an input. Automated production lines and robotics do this because they replace human labour, which is now only required to monitor the operation of the automated production lines and robotics. The second way in which automated production lines and robotics increase efficiency is by reducing the cost of materials. Materials are inputs. Automated production lines and robotics do this because they are able to work with higher precision and accuracy than humans, which reduces the wastage of the materials that are used as inputs. The third way in which automated production lines and robotics increase efficiency is by increasing the quality and therefore the value of the output. Again, this is because automated production lines and robotics are able to work with higher precision and accuracy than human labour. And the fourth way in which automated production lines and robotics increase efficiency is by saving time. Remember that time is an input, and so saving time is a way of reducing costs. Automated production lines and robotics save time because they can work more quickly than humans and don't need breaks. We can now look at how automated production lines and robotics can improve effectiveness. Remember that effectiveness refers to the extent to which the relevant operations management strategy, in this case the use of automated production lines and robotics, contributes to the achievement of business objectives. In undertaking this analysis, we must first identify the business objectives that may be achieved through the use of automated production lines and robotics. I've chosen four business objectives for this purpose. These are the business objective of increasing profits, the business objectives of increasing sales and market share, and the business objective of reducing workplace accidents. How does the use of automated production lines and robotics contribute to the achievement of the business objective of increasing profits? Well, it does this by reducing input costs. Specifically, it reduces labour costs by replacing human labour, um, which is now only required to monitor the operation of the automated production lines and robotics. It also reduces costs by reducing the costs of materials, because Automated production lines and robotics can do the work with higher precision and accuracy, which reduces the wastage of the materials that are used as inputs. Finally, automated production lines and robotics contribute to increased profits by increasing revenue. This is because automated production lines and robotics work with higher precision and accuracy than human labour, which means that they are able to produce higher quality output. Higher quality output can be sold at a higher price, which increases revenue and therefore increases profit. How does the use of automated production lines and robotics um, contribute to the achievement of the business objectives of increasing sales and market share.
Well, it does this um, by working with higher precision and accuracy than human labour, which means that automated production lines and robotics are able to produce higher quality output. A business that produces higher quality output than its competitors is able to attract customers from its competitors, which will increase its sales and therefore increase its market share. And finally, how does the use of automated production lines and robotics contribute to the achievement of the business objective of reducing workplace injuries or accidents? Well, it does this by um, doing the dangerous tasks that humans would otherwise do. In this way, it saves those humans from being injured. On this slide and the next two slides, I've given you recent examples of the use of robotics. I'll briefly summarise these examples for you, but I'll leave you to read about them in more detail. You can pause the video at each of these slides for this purpose. Uh, first, Google has developed digital assistants that can mimic the human voice. This technology could replace receptionists and workers in call centres. The second example is Coles introducing robots to work in the warehouses where it packs orders that customers make online. You can see that the advantages of this include greater picking accuracy and the fact that robots can work without breaks around the clock. However, this is costly. It's costing Coles between $130 million and $150 million over four years. And so Coles must be satisfied that both this upfront cost and the cost of maintaining the robots will be outweighed by the savings in labour costs from no longer having humans doing the picking and packing. The third example is Rio Tinto introducing robotic, that is driverless, trains to carry iron ore from its mines in Western Australia to a port on the West Australian coast, where that iron ore is then shipped overseas for processing into steel. You can see that this is enabling Rio Tinto to reduce its workforce. It no longer needs train drivers, and so Rio Tinto is able to save on labour costs. Other advantages of these trains are that uh, they're able to operate around the clock, and they're also able to operate in the very inhospitable conditions of the Australian desert. But again, these trains are expensive to buy and operate, and so Rio Tinto must be satisfied that the cost of buying and maintaining these trains will be outweighed by the labour cost savings. And here is an article on the introduction of technology strategies into Australia and its impact on employment. A report by a major consulting firm, McKinsey's, entitled The Automation Opportunity, estimates that between 25 and 46% of jobs in Australia could become automated by 2030. Unless the employees who are made redundant by automation are retrained, then this could significantly increase Australia's unemployment rate. Now it's important that you're able to describe a few real-life examples that you can use in answering business management SAC and exam questions. So make sure that you have taken some notes on each of the examples that I've just given you. The second and third technology strategies that we're looking at are computer-aided design and computer-aided manufacturing. Let's deal with computer-aided design first. Computer-aided design, or CAD, refers to a computer program, that is software, that facilitates the creation and modification of the design of products. Look down the left-hand side of your vocabulary sheets, find the term computer-aided design, and write this definition in there. CAD software creates three-dimensional diagrams based on inputted product specifications that allow the product design to be reviewed on a computer from all angles. CAD software can be linked directly to computer-aided manufacturing or CAM software so that the product design can be directly translated into the manufacture of the product. Where CAD software is integrated with CAM software, the technology is called Computer Integrated Manufacturing, or SIM. Computer-aided manufacturing, or CAM, refers to the use of a computer program, that is software, to control manufacturing processes. Look down the left-hand side of your vocabulary sheets, find the term computer-aided manufacturing, and write this definition in there. 
In computer-aided manufacturing, a central computer feeds programmed instructions to the machines that construct the goods. As I've said, CAM software can be directly linked to CAD software so that the product can be manufactured directly from the design. Where CAM software and CAD software are integrated, this technology is called Computer Integrated Manufacturing, or SIM. So far, as required by our first learning intention, we have described two technology strategies, that is CAD and CAM, that can be used to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of operations. However, our first learning intention also requires you to be able to evaluate these strategies. As I've already said, this means that you need to be able to explain and weigh up both the advantages and the disadvantages of these strategies. The purpose of this table is to help you to do that. Again, I've colour coded each advantage and its related disadvantages. Please include this table in your summary books, together with notes from the discussion which follows where this helps you to better understand this table. Both CAD and CAM software increase the speed of work. CAD increases the speed of product design and CAM increases the speed of product manufacture, including by reducing the need to manually reset machinery between tasks, because all of this resetting is now done by the computer system. On the other hand, if the computer software crashes, then the product design can be lost in the case of CAD, or production can be interrupted in the case of CAM. Both CAD and CAM software also result in a reduction of labour costs because they replace human labour and so save on the cost of wages. CAD replaces the need for as much labour in the process of designing a product and CAM replaces the need for as much labour in the manufacture of a product. However, it can be very costly to buy and install CAD and CAM software. For a business to save costs overall as a result of using CAD or CAM software, the upfront capital costs of purchasing and installing this technology must be less than the savings in labour costs. It also costs money to train staff to use the CAD or CAM software. Another disadvantage of CAD and CAM software is that while they save labour costs, this saving can often mean that some of the existing employees of a business who used to perform the work manually will now be made redundant. Having said this, it may be possible to avoid at least some of these redundancies if existing employees can be retrained and equipped with the skills that are needed to operate the CAD or CAM software. Both CAD and CAM software improve accuracy. CAD improves the accuracy of product design and CAM improves the accuracy of product manufacture. This increases the quality of product design in the case of CAD and the quality of the output produced in the case of CAM because the computer software reduces the risk of human error that existed when product design or product manufacture was done by humans. Finally, an advantage of CAD software is that it adds value for customers. This is because the use of CAD software makes it much easier to modify designs based on customer requirements. Instead of manually redrafting the product design where a customer's requirements change, the product specifications can simply be changed in the computer, and the computer program then immediately translates these changed product specifications into a new product design. Our second learning intention requires you to be able to propose and justify technology strategies as ways of improving the efficiency and effectiveness of operations. To do this, you must be able to specifically relate the use of CAD and CAM separately to efficiency and effectiveness. That is the purpose of this table. Please include this table in your summary books, together with notes from the discussion which follows, where this helps you to better understand this table. Again, all I've done in this table is to take the relevant advantages of CAD and CAM from the previous slide and relate them to both efficiency and effectiveness. Well, how do CAD and CAM improve efficiency? Remember that when we are talking about the efficiency of an operations management strategy, we are focusing on how that strategy 
increases the value of output and reduces the cost of inputs. The first way in which CAD and CAM increase efficiency is by reducing the cost of labour. Labour is an input. CAD reduces the labour required to design products and CAM reduces the labour required to manufacture products. The second way in which CAD and CAM increase efficiency is by increasing the quality and therefore the value of the output. This is because CAD and CAM uh, work with greater precision and accuracy than human labour and therefore reduce the risk of human error which could otherwise affect the quality of the product design or the quality of the manufactured product. CAD also increases the quality and therefore the value of its output which is the design of the product. It does this by enabling the product design to be more easily modified based on customer requirements. Where a customer's requirements change, then it's simply a matter of inputting the changed product specifications into the computer, which then translates these product specifications into a revised product design. This is of considerable value to customers. And the fourth way in which CAD and CAM increase efficiency is by saving time. As I've said, time is an input, and so saving time is a way of reducing costs. CAD and CAM do this because they can work more quickly than humans and don't need breaks. We can now look at how CAD and CAM improve effectiveness. Remember that effectiveness refers to the extent to which the relevant operations management strategy, in this case CAD or CAM, contributes to the achievement of business objectives. In undertaking this analysis, we must first identify the business objectives that may be achieved through the use of CAD and CAM. I've chosen three business objectives for this purpose. These are the business objective of increasing profits and the business objectives of increasing sales and market share. Well, how does the use of CAD and CAM contribute to the achievement of the business objective of increasing profits? It does this by reducing labour costs by replacing human labour in the product design and product manufacture processes. Reduced costs translate into increased profits. CAD and CAM also contribute to the achievement of the business objective of increasing profits by increasing revenue. This is because CAD and CAM operate with higher precision and accuracy than humans which means that they are able to produce higher quality designs and higher quality products. Customers are willing to pay more for higher quality products and higher quality designs, and this increases revenue and therefore increases profits. In addition, because CAD designs can be easily changed to meet customer specifications by inputting changed product specifications into the computer, CAD provides greater value to customers. This is a feature for which customers are prepared to pay more, which increases the revenue for the business and therefore increases the profits of the business. How then does the use of CAD and CAM contribute to the achievement of the business objectives of increasing sales and increasing market share? Well, CAD and CAM do this by working with higher precision and accuracy than human labour, which means that they produce higher quality product designs and higher quality products. A business that provides higher quality design and higher quality products than its competitors is able to attract customers from its competitors, which will increase both the sales and the market share of that business. This brings us to the fourth and final technology strategy that we're looking at, which is website development. Website development refers to the development of a website for operations purposes. In particular, we are focusing on the use of websites for e-commerce. E-commerce is the buying and selling of goods and the transmission of funds and data over the internet. Look down the left-hand side of your vocabulary sheets, find the terms website development and e-commerce and write these definitions in there. 
Note that because we are concentrating on operations, our focus is on how website development, and in particular, on how the use of websites for e-commerce can contribute to the efficiency and effectiveness of operations, and not on how websites can be used for marketing. Don't fall into the trap of talking about marketing or just about websites in general when you are answering a question about operations management and operations management strategies. Instead, make sure that your answer is specific to the use of websites for facilitating e-commerce. There are a number of ways in which websites can facilitate e-commerce. The first way is through enabling sales to be made online. And I'm sure that many of you uh, in the past have bought clothes, cosmetics and books online. The second way in which websites can facilitate e-commerce is through enabling customers to make bookings or appointments online. Again, most of you will have booked cinema tickets or perhaps even airline tickets online. Another example is medical clinics. Most medical clinics now have a website that enables you to book an appointment with a specific doctor online or to obtain prescriptions online. Thirdly, websites can be used to collect information from customers as where you're asked to fill out a follow-up survey about your experience in dealing with the business, or as where you're requested to provide information about yourself when you buy a product online. This information could include information about your age, your occupation, your income, or your postcode. And of course, most business websites provide information uh, to customers about the goods or services that they sell. They can also provide information to suppliers by advertising opportunities for suppliers to offer to sell inputs to the business. So far, as required by our first learning intention, we have described a technology strategy, that is a website with e-commerce facilities that can be used to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of operations. However, our first learning intention also requires you to be able to evaluate this strategy. As I've said before, this means that you must be able to explain and weigh up both the advantages and the disadvantages of the use of websites with e-commerce facilities. The purpose of this table is to help you to do this. Again, I've color coded each advantage and its related disadvantage. Please include this table in your summary books together with notes from the discussion which follows where this helps you to better understand the table. The use of a website with e-commerce facilities adds value for customers because it provides them with convenience. Customers can order and pay for products and access information about products from home at any time, including outside normal business hours. On the other hand, if a business's website crashes, then customers can't order or pay for products and they can't access information about products, and so the business might lose sales. The second advantage of using a website with e-commerce facilities is that it reduces labour costs for the business because there is less need for sales staff. Instead, customers can order and pay for products online, can make bookings and appointments online, and can access information about products online. However, while the use of a website with e-commerce facilities can save labour costs, this saving can often mean that some of the existing employees of the business who work in the sales area will be made redundant. And the third advantage of a website with e-commerce facilities is that it reduces the cost of capital resources. This is because a business which sells its goods or services online doesn't have as much need for physical premises that customers can visit to buy the goods and services of the business from. Uh, in this way, the business saves the cost of buying or leasing uh, bricks and mortar premises. For example, Amazon sells its books online, so it doesn't need to have physical bookshops that customers can visit to buy books from. Our second learning intention requires you to be able to propose and justify technology strategies as ways of improving the efficiency and effectiveness of operations. To do this, you need to be able to specifically relate the use of websites with e-commerce facilities separately to efficiency and effectiveness. That is the purpose of this table.
Please include this table in your summary books, together with notes from the discussion which follows, where this helps you to better understand the table. Again, all that I've done in this table is to take the relevant advantages of a website with e-commerce facilities from the previous slide and relate to these advantages to both efficiency and effectiveness. Well, how does a website with e-commerce facilities improve efficiency? Remember that when we're talking about the efficiency of an operations management strategy, we are focusing on how that strategy increases the value of output and reduces the cost of inputs. The first way in which a website with e-commerce facilities increases efficiency is by reducing labour costs. Labour is an input. A website with e-commerce facilities reduces labour costs because it replaces the need for as many sales staff, as customers can order and pay for products online, make bookings and appointments online, and access information about products online. The second way in which a website with e-commerce facilities increases efficiency is by reducing the cost of capital resources. Capital resources, such as premises like shops, are inputs. A business which sells its goods or services online doesn't have as much need for physical premises that customers can visit. And the third way in which a website with e-commerce facilities increases efficiency is by increasing the value of the outputs of the business. In this case, the increase in value for customers comes from the convenience of e-commerce. Customers can order and pay for products and access information about products from home at any time, including outside normal business hours. We can now look at how websites with e-commerce facilities improve effectiveness. Remember that effectiveness refers to the extent to which the relevant operations management strategy, in this case a website with e-commerce facilities, contributes to the achievement of business objectives. In undertaking this analysis, we must first identify the business objectives that may be achieved through the use of a website with e-commerce facilities. For this purpose, I've chosen three business objectives. These are the business objectives of increasing profit, increasing sales, and increasing market share. Well, how then does a website with e-commerce facilities contribute to the achievement of the business objective of increasing profits? It does this by reducing both the cost of labour and the cost of capital resources and therefore increasing profit. Where a business has a website with e-commerce facilities, there is less need um, for sales staff because customers can order and pay for products online, make bookings and appointments online, and access information about products online. Where a business has a website with e-commerce facilities, it has less need of physical premises which customers can visit to buy goods and services from the business. In addition, a website with e-commerce facilities contributes to the achievement of the business objective of increasing profits by increasing revenue. Such a website can do this because customers value the convenience provided by a website with e-commerce facilities. Customers can order and pay for products and access information about products from home at any time, including outside normal business hours. How does the use of a website with e-commerce facilities contribute to the achievement of the business objectives of increasing sales and increasing market share? Well, again, customers see the convenience of such facilities as adding value to them. Uh, customers, as I've said, can order and pay for products and access information about products from home at any time, including outside normal business hours. A business that provides greater value to its customers than its competitors uh, is able to attract customers from its competitors and this in turn will increase the sales of the business and will increase the market share of the business. 
On this slide, I have included a recent example of the use of a website with e-commerce facilities. As I've said, it's important that you have a few real-life examples that you can refer to when you're answering SAC or exam questions. And this is a good example that you can use in relation to websites with e-commerce facilities. So make sure that you take a few notes about this example. This article describes how Amazon is competing very effectively with bricks and mortar retailers, that is, retailers who operate out of physical shops. Amazon has launched an online store where customers can buy more than 150 Australian brands of clothes. This is in addition to Amazon's online shop where customers can buy more than 400 Australian and international grocery brands. Customers value the convenience provided by Amazon's online shops, and so they have moved from purchasing some of their clothing and grocery requirements from physical retailers to instead purchasing them from Amazon's online shops. The purpose of this slide is to give you some examples of other technology strategies that are used in service businesses. Very briefly, the use of computerized databases makes accessing information easier. It also saves a business storage costs because the business no longer has to store large volumes of paper-based documents. The use of global positioning systems allows a business to track its vehicles and other items such as pallets. This facilitates the coordination of logistics because if a business knows at any time where all its vehicles are, then it's better able to coordinate those vehicles in picking up and delivering products of the business. The use of the internet facilitates the making of bookings and appointments. This can save a business labor costs. The use of a business intranet can facilitate communications within a business, and this can save a business time. As I've explained before, time is an input and it has a cost attached to it. The use of scanners, such as those found in self-serve checkouts at supermarkets, can save a business labor costs. Instead of paying staff to serve at a counter where customers purchase their products, these self-serve checkouts can calculate the payment that is due from the customer, can take payment from the customer, and can give change to the customer. The use of web conferencing facilitates meetings. This can save time and also travel costs for a business. And finally, the use of email facilitates fast communications and it's free. Again, this is a technology that saves a business time, and time is an input which has a cost attached to it. This brings us to the end of this video. As a result of watching and taking notes on this video, you should now be able to do two things. The first thing that you should be able to do is to describe and evaluate strategies to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of operations related to technological developments. In this video, we've looked at four technology strategies. These are automated production lines, including robotics, computer-aided design, or CAD, computer-aided manufacturing, or CAM, and website development, including websites with e-commerce facilities. The second thing that you should be able to do is to propose and justify technology strategies as ways of improving the efficiency and effectiveness of operations. In class, you'll be doing a number of learning activities which will help you to achieve these learning intentions as well. For the moment, however, please make sure that you read the pages from the textbook referred to on the first slide. And if you find any information in that reading that you think is useful, please supplement your Cornell notes with that information. Thank you for your attention.